the 10th and um, let's say it's 8.30 p.m. and we see some different stars. Okay, I think I hover over a star, I can find out the name of a particular star. That's uh, Tar Azed. It's the name of the star. But now I'm going to push this and we're going to play it at 3,000 times the regular speed. And I want you to notice the star. So take a look at this star right here. That, actually, that star is Jupiter. It's not a star. Um, but let's take this star right here, Markham. Markup, if I then play, watch as Markup moves, you see, and there's the moon, in fact, moving. And so as time passes, the stars appear to move. Now we're coming into the day. In fact, there's the sun right there. So the sun is moving through the sky. But the stars, over the course of a night, they move. Let me move them really quickly, 30,000 times. All right, let's go back to 3,000. So now they're moving. The stars appear to move over the course of a night and the course of a day. The sun, of course, moves as well. So this is in real time all the different stars that we have that we can look at. And um, the shadows, as you can see, are changing here uh, by my trees. And um, it's about to get dark. One more day here. And the stars appear to move. Now if I look at this, they actually appear to move around what this... Uh, um, red circle right here, which is um, essentially the North Pole. So I'm kind of looking straight up. And so this picture right here is sort of a picture of the way the stars would move over the course of a night with some kind of a time-lapse photography. Now this motion is called the di diurnal mo motion. I if I could say that, which is the daily motion, diurnal. You'll still want to write that down. And um, now two points do not appear to move, and that is just the center part. I was trying to illustrate that. That's the place what we typically call the North Star, um, and that's the part that doesn't appear to move. Everything rotates around that, so we're looking straight kind of up into the north to find that part, all right? And that's true also in the south, and it's right above the north and right above the south pole. Those particular parts, parts, paleta parts do not move, okay? That's called diurnal motion. motion. Okay, now the ancients, what did they believe about this? Well, they believed that the sky rotated around the earth. You probably know that that's not true, is that the earth rotates, which makes the stars appear to rotate. And so that was um, their belief. But if you understand, it seems to make great sense. I mean, hence, look at our, our, our pictures here from Starry Night, is that it appears that the sky is moving. And so it seems very logical that the ancients would believe that the sky moves around the earth. Well, we'll discover why that changed over the course of time. That leads us to another important concept. And that is something called the ecliptic. Make sure you write that down. What is the ecliptic? That is the path of this, uh, on the celestial sphere of the sun. So the sun moves, of course, and we've just kind of seen that picture, and the sun moves across the sky, but it, it kind of follows a particular pattern. Now, what is that pattern? Okay. Well, now we kind of need a lot of text here, I know. Because of the tilt of the earth, which we're going to talk about in detail in a few minutes, or I think it's the next podcast, um, but it'll be a few minutes for me because I'm going to make it both together. Um, it lies north of the celestial equator for half of the year and south of the celestial equator for the other half. All right. I'd like you to kind of look at this particular picture. All right. Now, in this particular picture, let me change colors here. The red right here represents the, um, this is called the ecliptic, or this is essentially the path of the sun, called the ecliptic. Now, blue is the equator, or the celestial equation, equator, this blue line right here. And notice that the red line is not um, in the same path as the blue line. Um, it only crosses the path twice a year. It crosses, twice, crosses twice a year. In fact, if you understand the seasons, this is the, one of these is the autumn equinox, and one would be the spring equinox. And when it reaches the final, either the top or the bottom, you get spring, you get summer and winter, I should say. So that causes an um, interesting thing to occur. And here is a picture. I'd like you to draw a picture. What's the motion of the sun? 
And so as time goes on, this is these numbers here, like plus 30, in September, um, the, during the fall equinox, then you have, uh, he is right at zero, right? Right above in the March sky. But then in June right here, this is called the summer solstice. And then in March, you get the um, spring equinox. And then right here in December, we get the winter solstice. We're going to talk about that solstice, solstice, and equinoxes later, I think. But the key thing, I, in fact, I think it'd be good to chat this, is that the sun appears to move um, at different times of the year. Let me illustrate that in our cool program. So here is the sun today at this time at 11.23 in the morning, August the 10th, 2009. So this is the where it appears right now in the sky. So if I was looking to the, um, looks like I'm looking to the south, southeast kind of, I can find the sun. Now, but if I were to change the date, okay, and change the date, not to August 10th, but August, let's say, 30th. Now, do you notice something? On August the 30th, it was over here. Let's go back to August the 10th. There's today, and here's the sun. Here's the sun in 20 days from now at the exact same time. It is moved. Hmm. It's 1124 August 10th, 1124 on the 30th. The exact same time of day, it has moved over. And so over the course of an entire year, the sun will move and be at different points, move south or north or up or down kind of a thing uh, from your perspective in the sky. So the ancient people, to summarize, they believed that the earth was rotating, or right here, we knew that, that the stars and the sun and the planets, we'll talk about them in a minute, um, they rotate around the earth, because that's really what it appears that it does. But they were able to really chart them, and they learned about ecliptics, all this kind of stuff. So uh, I'm going to break this podcast up. I know this is actually section 1.1 in your textbook, but I think the podcast is getting a little bit long, so we're going to call this 1.1a, and we'll do b um, on the next podcast. Bye. All right, on this particular video podcast, what I want to do is I want to talk some more about the ancient astronomers and what they were able to determine. It seemed like I just had lots of different topics, and so I thought I'd break this in half, I guess. So let's talk about that. First of all, I want to talk about the seasons, you know, fall, winter, spring, and summer. Let's talk a little bit about that. Now, what causes the seasons? Now, it turns out that there are a number, actually two, big misconceptions. All right, so if I draw, and you should draw this, if I were to draw a little sphere here, and this sphere is the Earth right here, okay, and most of you know that the Earth um, revolves around the sun. All right, so let's put the sun right here. It's bigger, right? Well, it turns out that the um, rotation um, or the revolution of the Earth around the sun is what we call an, an, an ellipse. That means an oval, okay? Now, it turns out that as it rotates around the sun, at some points, it's actually closer to the sun than at other times. So this would be closer and this would be further away. A lot of people seem to think that this is what causes the seasons. When it's closer, it would be like the summer, and the further, it would be uh, the winter. Okay, that is not correct. It's caused by something else. Okay, so what is it that's caused by it? All right, let's talk about the second misconception. The second misconception, some of you may know this, is that the Earth has a tilt. The tilt, actually, as it turns out, is 23 degrees. And so it turns out that um, when the Earth is tilted, so now let's say this is the sun, and the rays of the sun are coming towards it. Um, if you are in the northern hemisphere, where we happen to live, in, in Colorado, um, the United States, um, this would be illustrative of the summer. Illustrative, there's a big word for you. And then when it's tilted away, okay, um, this would be an example for people living in the Northern Hemisphere that it would be the winter. And that is correct, okay, but some people seem to think that the Earth somehow changes the tilt of its axis, that it's kind of wobbling, going back and forth and back and forth. And that's not exactly correct. So what is correct? Okay, or to take a look at our seasons, we can see the tilt of the Earth, okay? So in the winter, okay, if you look, here's our 23 degrees, 23 and a half degrees. In the winter, it's tilted away from the sun, 
and therefore the person or the part of the world that gets most of the light is um, the southern hemisphere. This is actually the southern summer and it is the northern winter. Conversely, the, when it is tilted towards the um, sun, the northern hemisphere, this is the summer right here, hence the summer solstice. And when it's just right in between, it's the autumn or the vernal or the spring equinox. Now, that said, and let me kind of uh, do a short video clip to help you understand the whole bit about the tilt of the earth. Well, hopefully that helped you understand the whole idea of the tilt of the earth, is that um, the tilt of the earth doesn't change. It's not like it does a wobble, like we talked about in the video, but it rotates, okay? Now, just as a side note, why is it warmer in the summer and cooler in the winter? 